What's up, y'all? So I have talked about this before on Saturday Morning Lives and maybe in other videos, but I've never really done a video, according to my my YouTube search in my own channel, I've never done just a Yale deadbolt video, and I rekey a ton of these, and you probably are starting to rekey more and more of these if you're a locksmith, especially on the commercial side, because contractors and door guys love the Yale quick ship program. Now being part of the Asa Avaloy group, those deadbolts are simply rebadged of the original sergeant, uh, what they call board locks. Board, I'm bored, I'm bored. This is an old school sergeant, a real old school board lock, board deadbolt. It, and this one's really heavy. They're not a, they're not made out of the same metal nowadays. But I didn't have a. All I've got here, I'm rekeying three of them for a customer, and all I've got is a single cylinder. So as a point of reference, I wanted to show you this one as well, because it's a double cylinder and it acts a little bit differently. So the deal is, there is a couple of tricks to dealing with these things, and we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to show you all about the deadbolt and all that. But I just want y'all to be aware that. In addition to, hey girl, or hey girl, hey girl, hey girl, Yale, since they offer the quick ship program and they're, they're shooting for like the contractor type or the door installer type, that if you have not run across them yet, I would be surprised if you're a commercial locksmith, uh, but if you have not run across them yet, I'm going to go ahead and show you this. Uh, Debo, most of these, now when you think Yale, here in the U.S., when you think Yale, you think the Y1 key or the paracentric key. Almost all of this quick ship stuff is coming Schlage SC4 keys. So that's one difference. Now they can, I don't know how they order, they being like door companies and all that, because we don't order directly from Yale. These, these companies set up, I, I guess, with Yale directly or one of their partners to ship out quick ship stuff so that they can get it quicker. Because most of the time, special order Yale or, or any kind of Yale can take a while to get in. But with the quick ship program, they're targeting the, the builder's market, the contractor market, and all that. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this deadbolt real quick. There are a few key features that you need to be aware of. And uh, we are going to go over that. But just again, to let, let you know that you, if you have not seen these yet in the commercial sector, I'm surprised any new building that you see come up is either going to have hey girl or yale quick ship so let's take a look at them one thing i did mention yale being part of the also Abloy group they're all the same it's the same as that sergeant they took that design and modified it into yale's arrows and somebody else's can't remember who else's but they're all the same deadbolt so if we're looking at the yale and the sergeant, then we're gonna know what the arrow looks like as well. So let's take a look at it. And as I mentioned, these are single cylinder deadbolts. So these are how they're boxed. This is the Yale D series, D, uh, what? D, D what? There it is. Uh, blah, blah, sure, that cylinder thumb turn D212613, Schlag C. Uh, 613 finish is like a dark bronze, so that's kind of unusual nowadays as well. When you open it up, you're faced with this, and, and I showed, I know I showed this part in a lot, but if you hold this and then just dump out everything there, all right, you've got all your accessories, let's lay it all out, and then flip this up, which is also your drill template. I would hope as a locksmith that you would have an actual template, you know, to drill other than that but that's for those that don't uh, it always comes like all twisted up like this so you zoom just like that and then flip it out and be very careful because this is bronze finish and here we have standard single cylinder deadbolt comes with this little ring right here this is for your two and an eighth inch hole also provides a little bit better protection as far as like which would be very rare for some kind of metal like that, but it does provide uh, a little bit of extra protection from the latch. And I think you would, yep, you would do this. So if you have a two and an eighth inch hole, you'd have that out so that it kind of goes, you know, got your recess for 
hip protection and it would that recess would hold it better but if you had a uh, smaller hole you flip it over like that and then that lets you put it up in say an old schlage style deadbolt hole that had like an inch and five eighths hole drilled in it uh sometimes that's not as easy as they make it out to be but uh yeah uh in addition to it now i, I mentioned this again the weakest link there's a weak link to all products the weakest link in this guy is this guy right there this is the weak link now of course as locksmiths it's not our problem right up until it breaks and somebody's locked out i would hope you wouldn't necessarily sell these and leave this to the contractors to sell this so you can come along and put in your preferred a better quality brand not saying they're bad there are good and bad things about them but this part right here is definitely the weak point of the deadbolt one good thing about it is see how the sides are flattened so if you're using this on like a uh, for some reason like an old thin door or a thin bar door not having those rounded sides makes this excellent for use bad thing is they only come two and three quarter unless you special order a two and three eight so it's not uh, to make the grade one or the best grade rating uh, pretty much all devils have to have this fixed deadbolt instead of it having an adjustable so be aware of that if you have these or if you order these for your project they're pretty much always going to come standard two and three quarter because that's the back set instead of two and three eighths if you have a two and three eighths or if you're putting them on a house for some reason if you wanted them on your house you would uh definitely make sure and order two and three eighths as a separate item Sing a little right there like this a little wobbly but that's standard comes with this guy uh very rarely do i end up using that that's something that usually gets tossed because a lot of times it won't fit in the cutout of the door or it'll make it stand off or it just it just doesn't work right for some reason so that in my opinion is an option an optional feature there they come standard six pin with what looks like nickel silver keys i've done a video on the yale keys before i'm going to check them and see if they're magnetic but some of them do have trace amounts of metal in it more so than regular keys so if you were to have to recut one of these, beware, check them with your magnet first. Comes with two strikes. I've always been a little bit impressed with how thick these strikes are. A lot of deadbolt strikes you can bend, but these are actually thick metal, which is good and bad. So they're both the same thickness. However, on uh, certain doors, of course you could, you know, on a wood frame door, you could router it out a little bit more uh but old metal frame doors almost always you're just going to be drilling your your regular hole comes with these two heavier bolts that looks like quarter 20 thread uh just goes through like a regular dead bolt the double cylinder is a little bit different and it also comes with your standard bi metal wood metal screws for metal frames and if you needed to switch it out with a key and knob style cylinder you would simply just like most other commercial gray deadbolts unscrew this and take it out now the tailpiece is a little bit different we're going to hold it up all right and then it is a three o'clock to nine o'clock 180 degree turn tailpiece with the cap pin being at nine o'clock a lot of cap pins are right up here at uh say like 11 ish o'clock or, or one o'clock so that the timing has to do that if you're switching out one of these the timing has to match up to that three o'clock to nine o'clock 180 degree position if we take a look at one of the double cylinder they're pretty much i mean they're they're built the same we can see again this, this old school uh come on out it's old school sergeant considerably heavy it, it was full so, you know it's filled metal there and now they've taken out a lot of metal probably saves a lot of weight in shipping uh, but you can see the difference. So with double cylinder, you're going to have different tail pieces. Now, these may look very familiar because in replacement cylinders, you have these two different tail pieces. And they are typically labeled, what are they, RS, RS, DS, DS, and DL. If you notice that, so in your 
in your latch you can see how it's got that little kind of cut out and you see how that little I'll tell you now which side you need the you need the uh, the hump I guess you can call it there on the outside so that the two flats go together same exact way these would work so if you have a narrow door a inch and three eighths door or a thin door you'd use this if you use a standard door you use that and uh, and they mesh together like this in the latch so if you were going to be using a a replacement cylinder in that that is this is what those tail pieces are for we're going to take a look at it a little bit closer to check one thing though the double cylinder version i'm showing you again i'm showing you this it's sergeant and, and we started off yale but but it's it's all it's all the same even 40 years ago they it's the same thing it was so they have not changed the design uh, much at all so with the double cylinder you do have to have a backer plate all right so you put this on the door then you put this plate on comes with hollow screws just like old quick set let me go ahead and take these screws out so you can see what i'm talking about so they're hollow and then you have this guy Right, this is your outside cylinder. We'll take it, put it through the door, through the latch, and then take this and screw it in. Now these could either be, oh, no, get in the right spot. Screw it in, tighten it down. These could be flathead as well, like the old quick set style. But when I say it's hollow, look at this. You take this screw, screws into that screw. So once it's tightened down on the door, you come in with this and you make sure your tailpiece is aligned, right? Yep, just like that. So this would go this way. All right, and, uh, and then we see something funny on the inside. We see no screw holes. If you put your key in and turn it. All right, so you turn it, boom. It turns the out of the way which at that point, that's where these guys go in, go into those holes. So one good thing about these dead bolts is if you were using a double cylinder, which against, of course, is against fire code in a lot of areas, you would want to, uh, this would be one of the best dead bolts where you could put on where if nobody had the key, they couldn't just come along and take it off. However, with it being against fire code, that, that kind of nulls and voids a little bit of, of everything there. To make that turn, what's happening is this part right here. See how that turns? That's, that's that rotating plate right there. So we're gonna make sure that it is centered at the bottom. And when we put our cylinder in, all right, see how it's, out of alignment what happens is this goes into the bottom of the keyhole and the, the bottom of the cylinder is actually what is causing that to grab and turn so again you if you run across these in the wild and you don't have keys you can do one of two things if you're replacing it you can just drill through these caps to access that or you can pick it and turn it to your dooch about two o'clock, about, about 1.30ish, or the other way, all the way around. Of course, if it was on a door, you couldn't do that. So most of the time it's to your right, to about the two-ish position and expose the holes. Uh, now, on to replacement cylinders. You can take a replacement cylinder. In this instance, let's say we have a customer that wants Sergeant, you know. A sergeant, uh, what is this, Sergeant? or a cylinder or for that matter let's go rust one let's go rust one to get a rust one lock just like that again comes with all the parts in the bag be able to use this and uh we are going to go ahead and oh we forgot a screwdriver let's go ahead and drop this out
And uh, let's check our key rotation because remember I mentioned how the, the pin was at this position? If the pin's at this other position and if we got a full rotation, then we're okay with this part. So we'll just check it. So drop that in there, drop that in there. And drop this in here. So again, it doesn't matter what position that pin is in, it depends on the cutout on the back of it, that part. That's what causes it to turn to a certain stop position every time. So if we're holding this up, we got good, we're good, and boom. So even though the pin's in a different position, as long as that rotation doesn't stop here like it should for like a Schlage deadbolt, then you're good. Uh, and simply just drop it in there, just like that. And there we go. Put your screw back in and you have a Russwin, Yale, whatever you want to call that, mismatch <laughs> deadbolt. But let's go take a look at this cylinder and talk about that other last thing that is a little bit uh, wonky. Here's your original keys. All right, we're going to look at this in specifically the bottom shoulder. All right, so the best thing, besides just doing your typical pushing the pin down and unscrewing it, uh, the best thing that I've found for them is the old green wiser tool. It actually fits really perfectly in there, just like that, and allows you to unscrew it. Some of you have this, whatever they call this tool, this thing. Uh, it works, but the way it sits is a little off, so while well, it does work, it does kind of have a, like it, it's just a little bit wonkier. I don't know why, but in the very beginning, it doesn't sit perfectly. It may be how this kind of goes into it. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, but if you have the green tool, it works perfectly good. Now, beware of this. Uses a different pen, uses a different spring retainer spring all the etc etc and it has that cap so the reason it has this performs in a function so that you cannot access the lock for instance with some kind of manipulation tool and push through and cause it to somehow make this trip it's to protect against that so i'm going to push that disc out of the way simply just a really thin disc Pull our pin out and look at our spring. Our spring is a little short spring compared to most locks. It's got a little bit shorter spring, a little bit different retainer pin, so they don't really cross that great with other ones, but then we're gonna take this and follow it out. Now, you can use a solid follower with this because, you know, it's got the cap. You shouldn't have any trouble just using a regular solid follower, like this one, for instance. It, but if you're rekeying these, right, you are probably rekeying the knob or the lever handles as well. And because of the ridge, the, the, the how it sticks out like that, you really need a, a hollow one. So almost always, you, you know, unless you're gonna go back and forth, just having a hollow follower would probably be best to do this with. So, there we go, we're kind of that, and that's solid brass cylinder. Let's take a look at it real close there. The pins that come with it. Don't know if those are standard Yale pins or not. They do have a little bit of maybe chamfer on it, but I don't know. Uh, and, and you will notice, look at that. If you've worked with these a lot, you know, the space and depths are going to be schlage, but every so often you get some kind of weird counter milling or something's going on in the plug and it may cause it to sit up or not. So you might be doing, you know, say 30 of these, you might have two or three where you go to replace the, uh, the pins in there. We're just going to dump those out and try to put regular pins in. So what is that? Yep. Oh, yep. Okay. So two. Five, 
four, six, four, four, six, four, four. Okay, so on this one it worked out all right. Every so often you do have to go, you know, knock it down, maybe go down instead of using 240 for your five, you may have to use 237, but it looks like you just drop your plug follower, but it looks like it worked there. I'm gonna get this back together and I'll show you one last thing. Don't forget when you're putting it together to put your disc back in. Oh, don't drop it. Put your disc back in. And uh, makes it kind of hard to, to cap it and get started because of that disc, but you'll be all right once you do it enough times. All right, tighten all the way down, which is awesome. Go all the way down, tight, and then back off like one, maybe. One, we're gonna check that. Works good, but here's a thing. And here's the thing that I was talking about. See how the shoulder on this Schlage original key, or Yale original key, is uh, a little bit different. Still got the little notch, but look. See, see that right there? Okay, all right, I'm gonna code cut this. Just so you know, it's not a duplication problem. So it was 254644. I'm just going to code cut it real quick. And we're going to get back to our freshly keyed and reinstalled cylinder. Check our key in it. Works great. Grab our other key and it doesn't <laughs> work great. So this is one of the biggest dangers of this. What's happening is that shoulder is hitting the bottom. It sticks out just a little bit too much. So if somebody brings in one of these keys even if you don't know whether it's for a Yale deadbolt or for a Yale door lock, it doesn't, doesn't have any effect on the key and knob cylinders. This doesn't have any effect on that, only if they have a deadbolt. So if for some reason you cut one of those keys and, and it doesn't work, guess what? It's this bottom shoulder. So uh, you gotta take it down, you gotta take it down. Same way uh, with this guy. Any of the keys, unless you're using a you know how slight Yale is use only original keys but we can fix it real quick we can fix it real quick but it's just a shame that we have to do this we're just going to take a little bit off of that shoulder right there take it all the way down. Just take it all the way back like that. Now watch. Just to avoid any problems. So there you go. If you're having trouble. If you're having trouble with copying Schlage keys and people saying they're not working, then it's because of that bottom shoulder. It's because you have a Yale or probably a arrow or even a Sergeant. I think Sergeant deadbolts are gonna come probably a Sergeant keyway. So that's not that, that would be a little bit different issue. But uh, yeah, that's something to watch out for with the Yale and probably arrow Blah, 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 blah. D212, uh, Arrows version is like DB something. Uh, just to be aware, you might have bottom shoulder issues because of how deep that guy is. So anyway, that is it on Yale D212. 
deadbolts and arrow and sergeant, but mostly Yale because that's probably what you're gonna be seeing just because contractors and door guys love their little quick ship program. You can switch out the cylinder, the parts that come with most key and knob, Ilco, LSDA, GMS, are that's what those little tail pieces are for, or for those kind of deadbolts, whether you're using a double or a single cylinder. I forgot to mention in the Yale deadbolts, in the double cylinder version, it comes with the longer tail pieces, but it also comes with this little bitty pack. This little pack of short, that's if you have a thin door. Forgot to mention that. I think I've covered everything. If there are any questions, uh, post them in the comment section. I'll try my best to answer you. But again, thanks for watching, y'all. Make sure and hit that thumbs up. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next video.